that people are diving into. I believe that what you hear today is going to add value to those areas. Let's walk through this together, okay? Let's walk through this together. And again, man, I mean, we highly encourage questions. Look at this. Um, in John 15, it says the, these words, okay? Um, now, it, I ho hope y'all are hungry. I hope you are hungry for God's word. I hope you are hungry for God's presence. John 15 says, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. This is Jesus talking. He says, I am the true vine. My wife said, read about the importance of resting in his presence. Luke 15. I love it. I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Verse 2 says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Let's back up here for a moment. He says this. He says, I am the true vine. Jesus says, I am the true vine, which, which lets us know that there somewhere are false vines. There are somewhere false teachers, false teachings. For, this, something, for something to be true, it also means something is false, right? So he says, I am the true vine vine this 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 picture he's about to paint is 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 all through it's threaded all the way through the uh the bible um particularly in the gospels i am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser the vine lies inside of it dwells in the vine dresser okay it says and then he he uh shares this he says every branch in me let's pause there so we have a vine dresser, which is the father, right? God, the father. We have the vine, which is Jesus. Then he says the branches. So he's about to describe branches. Um, and there are different types of branches. He is, he is, he is about to paint this picture so clear. Okay. Now this is so good. Uh, every branch in me that does not bear fruit. So in other words, very, very clear, there are some branches that bear fruit and there are some branches that do not bear fruit. And Jesus handles the branches differently, look at this, depending upon what they are producing from their life. Look, look at this, y'all. Y'all ready? <laughs> are you sure? Are you sure you are ready for this? Listen to this. That is a vine dresser. There's a vine and there are branches. There are different types of branches. And the branches are identified based off of what they are producing. So I want to pose this question right here before I got I dive deeper into these simple words right here. What have you been producing lately from your life? Okay, what have you been producing lately from your life? In other words, what is hit is what is coming from the seeds that have been sown? What is coming from the seeds that have been sown? Listen to this. In order for there to be fruit, that is a sign that something has been sown. Something that has access has been sown. You cannot produce fruit from something that has not been sown. In other words, there is a seed somewhere along the line. Whether we know it was sown or did not know it was sown, there are some some seeds somewhere along the line, and those seeds those seeds are producing fruit. Listen to this. If anybody um, on this line right on this online right now, if you have a a backyard, front yard, whatever, listen to this. You did not go out into your yard and sow weeds. You did not. You did not go out in your yard and sow and sow these seeds of of weeds. But these things show up. These things um, emerge. Listen to this. If the yard is uncultivated. If the yard is uncultivated, these weeds begin to emerge. So while you wanted to produce good grass, that was the thought, that was the intent. While your intent was to produce good grass, these seeds, I'm sorry, these weeds begin to emerge when certain things were not cultivated. Man, listen, we're going somewhere very deeper here tonight, which is why in the beginning, when God tells Adam, he puts Adam in the garden. Right, the garden is set. He tells Adam to keep and to cultivate what he has sown. Listen to this. He tells Adam to keep and to cultivate what he has sown. In other words, 
in order to keep the weeds from growing in order and taking over the garden, you have to keep and cultivate the garden that I have set. Listen here. Put this in the comments right now. Listen here. The garden that I'm about to describe to you in a minute, in a minute the garden is your mind. Okay? I'm, I'm, I'm going to put this here from John 15. The garden is going to be your mind. Put that, put that in the comments. The garden is my mind. The garden is my mind. The garden is my mind. Man, <laughs> yes, the garden is my mind. Mind, your mind, your mind, your mind. Man, so many things are trying to get access to your mind, to your life. Man, the garden is your mind. It's various things trying to come up against your garden. And here it is. The thoughts that are being produced in your life, they are coming from somewhere, right? The fruit, here it is. If you, let's get very practical for a minute. Now, I'm, I'm going to dive deeper into this text. Let me be very, very clear here. If you, if you look in the mirror and you are saying things about yourself or you are looking at something and you are thinking certain thoughts about yourself, man, that thought is stemming from somewhere, from a seed that has been sown somewhere. So if you look at yourself and you're saying, man, I'm not this, I'm not that, I don't have this, I'm not good enough, my hands are not good, my mind is not good. It, these are constant thoughts going through your mind. Here it is. There have been some seeds sown in your life, whether you were paying attention or not paying attention, and these seeds are producing fruit, okay? It is producing fruit. If you want to know what is what has been sown into a person's life, examine what's coming out of their mouth. If you want, to, man, if you want to know what seeds have been sown into their life, into the heart, into their garden, if you know what has been sown, here it is. Close your mouth and listen to what comes out of their mouth. The garden is our minds. The seeds have been sown and they are only producing what's been sown. That's right, Tanisha. So in other words, this, we have to understand this, is that in order to cultivate and get some of these thoughts out of our mind, and to and to be productive, look at how Jesus handles this right here. He says, every branch in me, that's the good stuff, right? Every branch, in, he's divine, every branch in me, it says this, that does not bear fruit, he takes away. He removes the branches that are, oh, he, man, thank you, God. Um, he, he removes the branches that are not producing fruit. Imagine right now, if you could reach into your brain, your mind, and remove the thoughts that were not producing fruit. If you have the ability to do that, you would do it right here, right now, right? You would, you would remove it. Jesus says, I'm going to rem I, I remove the branches that are not producing fruit, right? Here's why he does that. Here's in part, why, man, I have a lot of time tonight. Listen to this. He removes the branches that are not producing fruit because if he allows those branches to remain, listen to this, they will infect the rest of the vine. They will infect and make it toxic the rest of everything else that is going on. So if he leaves those things there, they will make everything else toxic. Listen to this. So, so when it comes to, the, again, the garden being our mind, the enemy, what the enemy does is he does not have to always attack every area of your body or your life. What he does do is he attacks what? Your mind. He attacks your mind. If I can sow into their mind, if I can put things um, that are on media, social media, news, etc., into their mind. I can sow some things. Here it is. The enemy does not have to um, uh, sow. Uh, the enemy does not have to um, do a trick with, with with fear. No, he sows things into our mind that produces the fear. It all comes from somewhere. And so we really have to examine what's really going into our mind and what we're giving, giving access to, right? So here, here it is. Please write this down. Y yes, sir. Y yes, sir, David. Man, please write this down in the comments, okay? I want you, we're going deep into our text here. I want you 
to start, listen to this very clearly here, to start thinking about what you've been thinking about. It sounds crazy, but think for a minute. I want you to start thinking about what you've been thinking about. I'm going to explain it here in a moment. I'm going to say it one more time. I want you to start thinking about what you've been thinking about. This is vital. What, what I'm saying here is this, is so many thoughts are going through your mind. Um, you say, hey, I'm busy. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. All this stuff is going on at once. I got to go here, go there, go everywhere. I'm busy. I'm blah, 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 blah. Just running, 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 running. And then eventually you say, what? I'm tired. I'm worn out. I'm burnt out. I'm tired. I need to rest. I need vacation. I need this. Because we don't pause to think about what we've been thinking about. We have to examine our thought life. We have to examine what's being produced. Here's why. Look at this. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, look at this, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he removes it, takes it away so that it does not infect the rest of the vine, the branch, the plants. Also, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it. He cuts away at it. He chops it back. He cleanses it. So why? Not to hurt it, but so that it can produce more fruit. Again, I want you for those who just joined, to start thinking about what you've been thinking about, examining your thought life. It's, it's pivotal, it's important, because again, go back to earlier, because your the garden is your mind. You have to cultivate what's been planted. You have to cultivate, dig up what's been sown. He, he prunes every branch that bears fruit. In other words, listen to this, he does not put the branches on autopilot. He does not allow the branches to do everything that they want to do. Who are the branches? The branches are us. He does not allow us to do everything that we want to do, what we feel, how we think we ought to grow. No, 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 no. He prunes it. Here it is. He cuts it back so that it can grow into what he desires, what God desires for it to be. L look at this. Here, here, here's further why. He says very clearly, verse 3, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. The word cleanses. Here it is. The enemy knows this. If I want them to feel unclean, if I want them to feel defeated, if I want them to feel worried, what I need to do is to keep them from being in their word. I really could walk away and end this right now. Listen, I just need to keep them from the word because the word is what cleanses and it prunes. Listen to this. Here's a bit of, of a hard thing to, to say here, but I'm going to say it here. Listen to this. Listen, listen to this. There are too many people who are claiming to be followers of Christ, who are claiming to be Christians, disciples, all the lingo that we use. There are too many people who are claiming to be um, uh, followers of Christ, yet they do not spend time in they do not dwell in, they do not um, abide in, they do not know the word of God at all. This is not to make anybody feel condemned. No, I pray this actually convicts and stirs something on the inside of us, man, to have a hunger and an appetite for this word. Here's why. The more you read it, the more it reads you. I'm going to say this again. The more you read it, the more it reads you. It's like, it's like this. The more you look at it, I have minds out right now, the more I study it, the more I dwell into it, the more I'm, I'm searching and I'm, I'm getting inside of it, man. What happens is, here it is, this, man, I hope, man, I hope this helps you all tonight. The more I get into it, listen to this, I begin to see, I begin to see and know God and he begins to impress further his image onto us into our mind. He begins to plant, key word there, plant his word further into our minds as we read and study his word. Listen to this. 
for too many people, social media has become their Bible. For too, <laughs> for too many people, social media has become their Bible. It has become their Bible. It has become the thing that they live their standards by. Social media has become people's Bible. When they want information, they go to social media. The word of God is the thing that literally hit us. It cultivates the garden of our mind so that we look more like him. Listen to this. If the ultimate goal, that's right, Cheryl, is the sword of the spirit. If the ultimate goal is to be more like Christ, if that's the ultimate goal, then we have to know more about him. Not just some, I'm just reading it because I need to read it for a little bit to check it off my devotional list. No, I mean, it is this hunger and this appetite just to be close to him. This is it. Listen here. He says in verse four, he says, man, there's so much I want to share here. Abide in me and I in you as the branch can now, cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. This is so rich right here. Listen to this. He says again, abide in me. I'm telling you, abide in me, right? And I in you. Not only are you getting, as you get in me, more of me gets in you. I was just explaining that. Listen to this. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. In other words, I want you to uh, bear fruit. But if you're not in me and I'm not in you, how are you going to bear fruit? Fruit that's productive. Fruit of eternal value. Because some people are, it looks like they're bearing fruit, but their fruit here is, is poison. It's toxic. It's tainting everything. He says in order to, to um, bear fruit, because of fruit, because you cannot bear fruit on your own of itself. He says you have to abide in the vine. Um, and then, uh, excuse me, he says, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. He is saying, yo, you get in me, I'm telling you, I'll be further in you, and I will stir and awaken even further. Keyword here, my Holy Spirit that already dwells inside of those who are mine, who are my disciples. At the point of salvation, listen to y'all, this is, this is so key right here. Please understand this. Please, man, get this. Please get this. At the point of salvation where someone is, confesses out of their mouth and believes in their heart that Jesus is Lord, right? The Holy Spirit begins to dwell on the inside of that person, right? So their soul, their soul is now secured, right? Their, their soul has been turned from eternal damnation of hell and now it is it, it, it is reserved for heaven, right? Their soul is. Their soul is, is reserved for that place. This is very key here, though. Many people say, well, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm saved now. I'm good. Listen here. Your soul has been saved, but your mind still, your life still needs to go through the sanctification process. It still, even though your soul is, 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 is reserved, is taken care of, your mind still has to be worked through, which is why he says to now get in my word. In order to walk out this salvation you've been given, your mind has to change. The way you think has to change. And we all know this right now that in order for that to happen, in order for that to happen, you have to, your mindset has to change. In other words, he says this, as you read my word, I will begin to uproot. Listen to this. I will begin to uproot things that were sown in your life, even in your childhood. I'll begin to, I'll break out my spiritual shovel. I'll break out all, I break out um, my tractor, my bulldozer, all these various things. And I will break up and uproot the things that have been plaguing your life because your childhood, um, what you saw growing up, um, the people who are around you in your adulthood, all these various things, listen, very key word here, are trying to have a stronghold on your life stronghold on your life. Like, I don't want to let it go. So what can break a stronghold? Not this, not fist, but the word of 
God. It goes, listen, it goes, I don't care how strong you are. I don't care who you are out here. Um, uh, I don't care who you are out here. In your physical strength, you are not about to walk outside and pull a tree out of the ground. I don't care. I don't care how many times you've been in the gym, man. You've been in there every day. I don't care how much you bench press. I don't. I can care less. It does not matter. I don't care how long you work out. You are not going to be able to go outside and pull that tree out of the ground. It's not happening. It's not happening, right? So what can pull it down? You need equipment that when the equipment goes up against the tree, it can oh, it can cut it down. And I noticed this too. Then those who are removing trees. They also put things on the tree that kill the roots to make it easier to uproot the tree. This is vital. In order to either put something on it to kill the root to remove the tree. Are y'all listening? I have to put something on it to kill the root to remove the tree. Too many of us are trying to uproot the tree without killing the root. And you can, oh my God, help me tonight, Holy Spirit. We are, we are trying to get things out of our life, the tree out of our life, but not kill the root. What kills the root? The thing that kills the root is the thing that can go underground. In other words, listen to this. Y'all, please don't miss this. Please, please, man, do not miss this. In order, to, in, in, order, in order to get rid of the tree, you have to kill the root. In other words, where's the root? The root is where? The root is under the ground. In order to get to the root, a place that you cannot see with your own eyes, you need something that can go into that place and deal with what you cannot see. Are y'all listening to me tonight to go and deal with things that you cannot deal with in, with your own eyes? Too many times what we are saying is this, is that, I don't know why I'm this way. Why am I thinking like this? Why am I operating like this? I don't know what's going on. Could it be there is this root that's been feeding all the fruit in your life? It's this root that's constantly just producing all this fruit constantly. Here it is. Why can I, why, why can I, why can I not navigate a relationship? Why do I keep going into debt constantly? Why can I get over this, this, and this? Boo. Could it be you are dealing with something that you're trying to examine the fruit, the external, which you're saying with your eyes, but God is saying, you're not going to get rid of that until you abide in me. Where I get down into the roots, that's when that thing changes, okay? Man, there's so much right here that I want to share. Let me, let me, oh, there's so much, man. If you have questions, man, please ask. I'm not going to finish nowhere near this, okay? But let's listen here. Um, I got a question here on Instagram. Real quick, abide means this. Real quick, abide means this. It means to continue in a daily personal relationship with Jesus. We do this by trust, by prayer, by obedience. Abiding means this. It means to dwell. It means to stay. It means to sink in. It means to go deeper. Understand this. Understand this. Abiding does not mean uh, you sit there and just stare at the wall all day. That's not abiding, y'all. Get get rid of that that thought and I, that, that's not abiding. Okay, here it is. You you abide in your home, right? You go from room to room to room, kitchen, dining room, uh, wherever you go. You're all you're, you're abiding. You're moving in your home, right? But you know your home. You can move around your home. Listen to this with your eyes closed. Just for, for the most part, you know the layout of your home. When you abide in him, he begins to show you how to navigate even with your eyes closed. Are y'all with me tonight? He says, abide in me so you can learn what the home looks like. So you can learn how to navigate even with your eyes closed. I'm telling you to get in me, to abide in me, to navigate what you cannot do in your own strength. He's, oh, Oh, I want to teach you how to navigate life without always looking with your eyes. This is what he says, man. man oh, I want to, man. Mm. This is why it's not about sight. It's about faith. This is why right here, 
This is why. This is why. He said, dwell in me. Abide in me. Get to know me. I'm going to show you how to navigate even what your eyes cannot see. Man, there's, there, there's so much here. I, I got a question here. I got a question. Um, the question is this, is um, on Instagram, how do we evaluate the type of fruit we bear and avoid, oh, this is so good, and avoid comparing our fruit to others? I'm going to read it again. That's right, Danny. That's right, man. Listen here. How do we evaluate the type of fruit we bear and avoid comparing our fruit to others? So good. So good. Here's how, here's how we begin to, in other words, examine our fruit, right? Figure out what we're producing and not compare it to others. Let's see here. Let's see here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it in a few words, then, then explain it here. What's pivotal? And y'all and y'all hear me physically and spiritually here. We have to learn how to mind our business. I'm going to say this again. We have to learn how to mind our business, to mind our business. What are you saying, Pastor? Here's what I'm saying. It's because so many times we have our hands, our eyes, and everybody else's stuff, so much so that we can't keep up with our own stuff. We're always trying to check somebody else and see what everybody else is doing. I want to know. I'm, I want to. I want to know. But we have not learned how to mind our own business, and so we like to dwell and be nosy in everybody else's stuff. But we have not learned to cultivate our own gardens. Here it is. You got to get out of their stuff. Here it is. You cannot live in your house and everyone else's house at the same time. You got to choose. Here it is. What's going to be my address? Where am I going to dwell? Where am I going to, where, whoa, what's my lane? That's where we begin to, to identify our fruit and the value of our fruit by minding our own business. And to say, God, shit is very key here. Show me, me. Y'all, this is simple stuff tonight, but it's profound and it's needed. God, Show me, me. If you read Psalm 139, it'll blow your mind. It talks about search, God search me, God examine me, God test me, God show me what's on the inside of me. All these things, man, will absolutely mess. I mean, it will it will change your life. You have to learn how to mind your business and get in the lane. This is why when you see horses race, horse races, they have those blinders on. Just like Proverbs 4, just like Proverbs 4, I believe it's 20, uh, uh, see the 21, 22, 23, all the verses there. The blinders keep you focused, keep you focused, which is why, hear this, I think social media is a great tool when it's used properly. But if social media is causing you to play the comparison game, you may need to reevaluate where you're spending your time. Yeah. Yeah. Here's why too. It's because um, um, uh, uh, many times, thank you, Holy Spirit, many times the people who are showing you things on social media is really not their fruit. It's fake fruit. It's fake fruit. Meaning this, and I, man, a lot of people that, that, that we talk about, we admire, whatever, whatever. Man, I talk to quite a few of these people that are that, and, and, and they ask questions, and man, they ask for advice all the time. And, and I do my best, man, led by God to help them. It's nothing like going to a table and you're hungry, and the person has fake fruit out on the table. That fake fruit, it looks real. You ever you, you see somebody have like grapes, th those, those grapes on, on their table? And but from a distance, what happens? It looks real. From a distance, it looks real. Listen to this, y'all. From a distance, it may look real. The grapes on the table, it, look, it looks real. It has little vines out of it. It looks real. And then when you get plastic, that's it, plastic fruit. Then when you get close up to it, you realize, wait a minute, this is not real. People show you fake fruit because it looks real from a distance. <laughs> but when you get close up on it, you can examine it and see, wait a minute, this ain't even real. 
This is not even real. So you mean to tell me, listen, listen here, you mean to tell me I have been in, envying, I have been um, ideally desiring, listen to this, I have been coveting something that's not even real? Are y'all listening to this? That's, can you imagine that? You're coveting, wanting, desiring, envying, being jealous of something that's not even real? Man, that's why he says, abide in me. Dwell, reside, stay. Again, mind your business, man. It is, it is vital. It is vital. Listen to this. I want to read something very, very key to you all, okay? Um, this comes from, um, this comes from uh, John 8, verses 31 through 32, okay? John 8, verses 31. Yeah, I'm not getting anywhere near where I want to go tonight, <laughs> but uh, okay, John 8, 31 through 32. It says this. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, okay? Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, who is he talking to here in John 8, 31? He is talking to those who believe in him. He is not talking to people who do not unbelievers. He is about to deal with believers, okay? This is why I love Tuesdays, y'all. I, I, I can go deeper than I can on Sundays. I can go deeper many times. I love Tuesday nights, by, by the way. Jesus said to those who believed in him, okay? If you, there, there it is again, if you abide in in my word, you are truly my disciples. I'm not making this up. I'm giving you all what the word of God says. John 8, 31 through 32. He is speaking to disciples. Let's be clear on our interpretation. He is speaking to disciples, those who claim to be followers of Christ. He says to them, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Then he says, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. That goes right back to what I was just saying to you all about the whole fake fruit scenario. He tells those who believe in him. So if you claim to believe in him, if that's you, right? If that's you, he says this, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. You are truly my disciples. So an, as an evidence that you are my disciple shows up in the fact that you abide in my word. I'm a, I, I got I to gotta slow that down. Evidence that you are my, how, how, do, how do I know you're my disciple? He says here, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciple. I, I see the evidence that you are my disciple because you abide in my word. Listen here. This is very, very key here too, though. Very, very key. Abide, I told you earlier, means to means to dwell in, sink in, um, uh, go deeper in that place. That is directly tied to also this. Abiding is directly tied to obedience. Oh, listen to this. Man, it's directly tied to obedience. It's directly tied to obedience, you all. It is directly tied to obedience. Um, um, man. <laughs> man, questions. What I, I gotta I gotta end this. Man, this, this is so much I want to share with y'all tonight on, on this topic. Like, man, this can alter our life because our minds change here. Our mind is the garden, it's the garden. To the, our gardens is our, our our minds and the enemy trying to sow these things. I'm telling you all how to uproot it. I've been showing you tonight, man. It comes literally from his word. It comes from his word, from his word. Man, what question, man? It comes from it. Man, you know what? I, I got to give y'all one, one more thing. I got I to gotta give y'all this. I got to give, give you all this. Um, um, okay, I'm, oh, man, listen to this. I'm going to give, give you all this too. I'll give y'all John 8, 31 through 32. Right. Let me also give you all this. This is going to bring it all together. The dwelling, the abiding, the obedience, everything is going to, it's about to be brought together right here. Listen to this. Um, uh, in Joshua, slow down, Brown. Here it is. In Joshua 1, it says this. I'm going to read the message real quick. The message translation. Okay. Um, John 1 says this. In the same way, 
I was with Moses, I'll be with you. I won't give up on you. Oh, man, this is going to be encouragement for you all tonight, man. Soak these words in. I won't give up on you. I won't leave you. Strength, courage. You are going to lead this people to inherit the land that I promised to give their ancestors. I'm going to read that again. You are going to lead this people. Hear me, people of God. Hear me right now. You're going to lead this people to inherit the land that I promised to give their ancestors. In other words, their ancestors were made a promise that outlived the ancestor's life. A promise was given to ancestors that would outlive the ancestors. In other words, there were ancestors who died not seeing the fulfillment, but they died knowing that somebody after me is going to be here. The, the, they're going to inherit what God promised me. He says here, give it everything you have, heart and soul. Make sure you carry out the revelation that Moses commanded you. In other words, don't just read it, carry it out, obey it. He says every bit of it, don't get off track, either to the left or the right, so as to make sure you get to where you're going. That's it right there, minding your business, right there. That's it again, minding your business. Don't get off track, left or right, so as to make sure you get to where you're going. Then he says this, he says, and don't for a minute let this book of the Revelation be out of your mind. He says, ponder and meditate on it day and night, making sure you practice everything written in it. Hope you are read, hope y'all with me right here. Here's the last part. Then you will get where you're going. Then you will succeed. Have I commanded you? Don't be timid. Don't get discouraged. God is God, your God is with you every step you take. Man, that's directly from his word. He says to meditate and practice. Practice. Listen here. My last thought here on, on this. He says meditate. He says ponder and meditate day and night. In other words, while you're in your home, while you're at work, at the grocery store, at your kid's game, um, online, buying stocks, what, buy, building a business, whatever it is. He says don't do these things without, without, my, without my word. Don't do these things apart from me. Ponder me. Ask me for discernment in every area of your life. I'm here to help you navigate it. Think on me. I am here with you, right? He says, make sure you practice everything written in it. Practice. Listen to this. Last thought. Too many of us are trying to play the game of life, but we are not showing up for practice. I'm going to break this down. Too many of us are trying to go through this game of life, trying to play the game, but we have not shown up for practice. He says to practice, he says to pr practice everything written in it. In your alone time, when no one's looking, when no one is, is, is on your screen, he says to practice it. Show up for practice. That way, when it's time to play the game, hear this, you've got some reps in. You've, you've been exercising it. You have been working your mind. Re hear this, you have been conditioning your mind. Conditioning it. Too many of us, I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it in this. We are out of shape. That's it. We're out of shape. We're out of shape. Not just physically, but spiritually, we are out of shape. We have not been conditioning our spirit, conditioning our minds, getting our reps up, building up our endurance. So what happens is life is wearing us out. It's wearing us out because we have not been practicing and building up. Here it is our wind, our conditioning, our endurance. So the devil is taking your lunch and eating your lunch in your face because he is outrunning you with trials. But God is saying, if you get your endurance up and your wind up, you can go further, faster because your wind is up. You've been practicing. Your endurance is up. This is how you defeat. Man, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Thank you, God. I'm done. I'm done. Hey, come back next week. I got some more for you. I got, I, got, I got some more for you. Man, tonight, man, I wore my workout gear intentionally, man. Like, like man, we're going to work out together. We're going we're gonna to work out together. That's so good. That's so good. Listen, listen here. 
Listen here, cause I want. I, I believe. <laughs> I believe there are so many questions, man, that are gonna that are gonna emerge from this. And I want to be able to answer you all's questions, okay? I want to be able to answer your questions. I believe this, and so here's what I need for us to do before I answer questions tonight. I thank you guys so much for who you are. I'm about to answer this question from, from Instagram as well. Is is here? This I need us really quick. I'm a, I'm gonna do a quick uh, intermission here. This is a part of worship. This is a part of us us uh, cultivating the garden in our mind. Um, uh, Facebook, Instagram, man. I, I need you all. Uh, all all my, my my troops behind the scenes. Uh, go ahead and post really quick. Go ahead and post the giving information. Um, you here for the first time, second time. You come here regularly, man. We 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 don't hide from giving. Giving our our generosity is what advances the kingdom of God. It's what allows us to be able to do broadcast, impact lives, pour into communities, um, pour into people, impact people, advance God's kingdom, give to causes. All these various things are because of the generosity of our people. And so I want you to hold your questions just for a moment. I'm going to answer you all's questions. I want you to post the giving information, and I want us to give at this time. Um, one thing that we do with all of our community here, you're going to see the word go flying up all over the screen. We use the word go to show that we have given because our our resources are not for a person. Our resources are to go, to flow through us. It's a currency. It moves. It's meant to move through and to go and impact other people. So the word go is going up all over the screen. We use the word go to signify that we have given. So please use the giving option that works best for you. You have changed my whole mindset. David, man, I thank God for that, man. That's him. That's God, man. That's God using his vessels, man. That's him using his vessels. That's it. Man, put the word go. Put the word go on the screen. It lets us know that you have given, man. Thank you all so much, man, uh, for believing in the mission and the vision that God has given us in his house, man. Every man, every woman, every teen who's watching, man, thank y'all for 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 man believing in what God is doing. Um I noticed too while while you are giving um for those who may have missed it man yesterday um we did prayer and protest in the park. Um uh I'm I'm gonna shout out Ashley here in a minute. Ashley <laughs> Ashley Hunter in, in a minute. Um God told me Thursday night, Thursday evening, I forget no, Thursday, somewhat Thursday, um that there were going to be a hundred, he said, Alex, a hundred people praying, call them together, a hundred people praying, a hundred people praying. Um, and then, um, and, and so I was like, all right. So I told staff, I said, like, hey, y'all, God said a hundred people praying. And my girl, Ashley Hunter, uh, came through in the clutch, add me in at first. Like she said, hey, why don't we do that, but take it to the park? I mean, let's take, take it to the park. Let's, let's call the people out. Let's do it outdoors. And man, when she said that, man, we went crazy. And so when we started putting the info out about prayer and protest, prayer, excuse me, and protest in the park. And listen to this. Not only did a hundred people show up, there were well over a hundred people that showed up to pray and protest in the park. We did a protest via prayer. Absolutely incredible, man. People were crying out to God in this park. People were, people were walking by um, uh, with their dogs or whatever, and they were stopping and being a part of what God is doing. And they were, they were praying, they were looking, they were watching. People was on the, on the ground crying out to God. It was absolutely incredible, you all. That's, those kind of things are possible through your generosity, man. So thank you all for partnering with this gospel uh, this vision to spread the gospel, man. That was absolutely incredible to witness that yesterday. Absolutely, man. Uh, thank you. Y'all keep on putting go on the screen. I got a question here I want to answer um, on Instagram. and I'm going to bring them back in again. I got two I got two here. Uh, real quick, um, I understand reading daily. How often do you suggest personal fast? Great question. Uh, she said, I understand reading God's word daily. How often do you suggest personal fast? Okay, I'm gonna answer this here real quick here. Um, I believe this when it comes to personal fast. Um, fast should be led by God, right? We know that part. It should be led by God. I believe this. Fasting should be, of course, the the, the frequency of it it differs from person to person. 
Here's what I would advise, okay? This is Alex Brown, what God has led me, what I would advise. I advise this, making fasting a lifestyle, meaning that it's built into, it's built into the, the rhythm of your life. So in other words, don't just wait for your church to call a corporate fast, but build a fast into your lifestyle, which means that if it's you, you praying, of course, always asking God first, God, how, how you have me to fast? But I believe that fasting is a part of our lifestyle. Here's, here's, here's the biblical part of that. If you look in, in the Gospels, Jesus, Jesus literally says, some things do not come out but by prayer and fasting. And so whether I know it's there or not there, when I build fast 